Hi, welcome back. It's me again, Professor Schimmel. I believe this is part three of the um, section on virology. And I think in this segment, I'm going to try to keep it short. I'm just going to start the survey of DNA viruses and I'm going to spend some time talking about some diseases caused by members of the viral family known as herpes viridae. Um, we're all familiar with these viruses, whether or not we know it. All right, so um, the herpes viridae family, they have double-stranded DNA as their genome, and these are viruses that cause um, latent infections or persistent infections. And so um, let's say um, an individual is infected with one of these viruses like herpes simplex type 1, which I'll I'll talk about next, um, and that's the one that causes, we call them cold sores or fever blisters um, or, or oral herpes. Um, and so um, many people, not all, but many people after infection will have an initial outbreak, one or more cold sores, and then uh, the virus will um, uh, become latent uh, and it will um, remain dormant in their nerve cells, um, could be for the rest of their life, or it could become reactivated once or more than once over um, a period of years. Um, and in some cases, reactivation may be a result of um, physical um, or emotional stress, like another illness, for example, or um, used to be that elderly folks uh, were the ones where we almost exclusively saw shingles, and it would be associated with um, poverty and poor nutrition uh, because we don't do a great job of taking care of the elderly in our society. Um, okay, let's see. Um, other triggers that might cause these viruses to reactivate could be things like um, exposure to sunlight, herpes simplex type 1. That one can be reactivated by um, a sunburn or by a fever. Um, even um, a woman's menstrual period um, can reactivate uh, one or more of these herpes viruses. Um, and genital herpes, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it can be reactivated by friction. I'll leave you to work through that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and pick up the discussion with um, herpes simplex type 1. Uh, and this one is also known as um, human herpes virus type 1. Yep, that's in your notes. And you've got a, uh, a couple of um, photos in your uh, notes, one showing a typical cold sore and the other um, an electron micrograph of um, the herpes uh, simplex virus. Okay, so um, let's... Let's jot down some notes. So this is the variety of herpes that causes cold sores or fever blisters. Um, can also infect the genitals, all right? And when the genitals are infected with this herpes simplex type 1, the disease caused is virtually undistinguishable from an infection with herpes simplex type 2. Um, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they estimate that um, 50 to 80 percent of adults are infected. Hmm. Uh, possibly as high as 90% by age 50, okay? And um, if the virus is inoculated into the eye, it can cause eye infections as well. Not a good thing. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about herpes simplex type 2. Uh, and um, this one is also known as a, a human herpes virus type 2. And you've got a, um, a photograph of um, some skin showing the um, blisters associated with uh, genital herpes in your notes. Sorry for that. Um, okay, so this is the virus that causes genital herpes. It's, uh, it's referred to as or categorized as a sexually transmitted infection, an STI, or STD, sexually transmitted disease, is, is also correct. Um, all right, let's talk about the progression of the disease and the symptoms. So um, usually direct contact with an infected individual or fomites are possible uh, as a source of infection. And then we're going to see about a one week incubation period. And then the patient will experience a burning and tingling sensation at the site of infection. Uh, this will be followed by the development of, like the uh, photo in your outline, fluid filled blisters. This is at the site of infection. I don't mean like, you know, all over the body, bad enough. Uh, and that fluid is highly contagious. All right. So if this individual um, or any of their clothing uh, comes into contact with someone else, they could become infected that way. 
Um, all right, so the blisters, they will continue to develop and, and, uh, and they should resolve within about two weeks um, after they begin. And then the vi virus will remain latent or dormant in uh, cell bodies of neurons for the, pa for the patient's uh, entire life, for the remainder of the patient's life. Uh, may become reactivated once or more than once. Um, so why do some people, for both types 1 and type 2, why do some people uh, maybe um, have a minor outbreak initially or none that they detect uh, um, and, uh, and then never have another outbreak and some people just have quite regular outbreaks? Really complex question. One would uh, relate to the, um, and probably the most important answer, the um, immune status of the individual. And we can we can talk more about this one when we're together in class. Um, still talking about herpes simplex type two. I think you've got some bullet points here. Um, let's see. I'm picking it up in your notes with maybe pass to the fetus. Um, um, across the placental barrier may, if that doesn't happen, may be passed to the child as it passes through the birth canal of a woman with an active infection. Now this one tends to be reactivated by stress. Um, I have no children, but um, other women have reported to me that um, being pregnant and ultimately giving birth is very stressful. I'll trust them on that. And so it's quite possible that a pregnant woman that's infected is going to have an active case when she goes to deliver and um, if the child passes through her birth canal, it can become infected in that way. Um, I think I've got some, yeah, I've got some other notes about this in a, in a um, just a little bit, a little further on in this lecture, so I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna follow up on that one for right now. Um, all right, so transplacental infection, possible but not likely, um, not curable, I'm talking about infections in the infant, but uh, can be suppressed using um, antiviral drugs such as um, acyclovir, for example. Um, and you've got some other examples in your notes. All right, so let's talk in some more detail about neonatal um, herpes. Um, okay, so here are my notes. Some reports suggest transplacental infection is possible. Uh, apparently it can happen, but um, the, the uh, likelihood is low. When it does occur though, it can cause um, a spontaneous abortion, a miscarriage of the, uh, of the fetus, or if that doesn't happen, uh, the fetus survives to um, a live birth, Cent or excuse me, severe central nervous system damage uh, is possible, and I'll be more specific in a few minutes. Um, if that newborn uh, is um, untreated, their survival rate is about 40%. And um, even with treatment, serious nervous system damage is, uh, is possible. The situation is most serious if mom is infected during the course of her pregnancy as opposed to being infected before she became pregnant. Uh, let's see, my other notes say um, that um, when the, um, let's say, transplacental infection didn't occur, child passes through the birth canal, acquires the infection in that manner. Those infections are usually going to be confined to the, uh, to the skin um, and um, treatment, same antiviral drugs, usually will uh, give us a good prognosis, not a cure, but prevent some of the serious damage that I've uh, previously mentioned. Uh, let's see, um, when we do see central nervous system damage, here are some of the things that we might observe. Uh, developmental delays, uh, blindness, hearing loss, and uh, epilepsy is also, possible, uh, is also a possibility. Now, diagnosis is um, typically by culturing the virus, but that can take several days. There are new tests that use a, a procedure known as PCR, polymerase chain reaction, that give us much faster results. We wanna know as soon as possible. We don't wanna be giving a newborn those pretty hardcore drugs unless it's um, absolutely necessary. Okay, I think this uh, segment's probably been long enough for upload purposes. So when I come back, I'll pick up the discussion with the varicella zoster virus. That one's gonna take a while too because we'll talk both about chicken pox and shingles. Thanks for watching, I'll be back.